to the 27th annual Agriculture Open Day. Hello. Let's get some attention here at the front of the stage, please. Good morning, good morning, good morning, vendors, students alike. Welcome to the 27th annual Agriculture Open Day. My name is Shaira Flanders, and I'm going to chair our opening ceremony for you this morning. But before we begin, I'd like to begin with a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you for bringing us safely to the Agriculture Open Day here at the Newtown Playfield this morning. We want to ask that you guide and protect us throughout today's proceedings. We ask that you would take us back safely at the end of the event, and we hope for a very successful event as well. We know those persons who gave their all, they might be exhausted, but we are very grateful that you kept them healthy. And of course, our farmers, our vendors, our agro-processors, we want to thank them as well for coming today. And we're grateful that you have been able to keep them. Continue to give us strength and guidance. And we ask that you would also continue to bless the agricultural sector and those who lead it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so before we go any further, I ask that you welcome the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Marine Resources, Mr. Ron Dublin Collins, who will deliver the welcome and opening remarks. Good morning to all. Allow me to recognize the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Marine Resources. The Good morning, everybody. My name is Mochi Sidam. I'm the treasurer of the St. Kitts Agua Processors Cooperative, SAP for short. I bring you greetings on behalf of the President, Mr. Jermaine Mike, who unfortunately on our group. My main focus today is to speak on how agro-processing or value-added food is important to our country and economy. The agricultural sector plays a critical role in the overall economic growth of the St. Kitts and Nevis economy. Indeed, agriculture is expected to lead to a significant transformation of the economy to improvement in the sector's productivity. So too, food processing is an important activity related to the agricultural sector and is dominated by predominantly micro and small scale businesses which operate in the informal sector of our economy. Agro-processing is important for a number of reasons, chief of which is reduction in post-harvest losses. Although I do not currently have the data to quantify the loss, from speaking to farmers, it is my belief that it is significant. Intuitively, we also do know that an extremely small percentage of food products harvested in the country are processed. Many of the health and even reported Ministry of Health and even has even reported a rise in NCDs, although not from a health and nutrition perspective. Agro processing has the potential to increase nutritional value and also increase food security to a reduction in food shortage and wastage. Agro-processed foods also has greater price stability on the domestic and international market and may therefore increase market opportunities for export, contributing to income development of the agro, in particular, the rural communities, which are mostly engaged in farming. The development of the agro-processing industry may also promote employment generation contribute to enterprise development and import substitution. Here are just a few of the benefits of the sector that the sector offers. Secondly, the agro-processing industry in St. Kitts and Nevis is not well advanced, and there is a relatively low degree of value addition to agricultural commodities. Government intervention is needed in policies to strengthen the sector. 
If government is serious on developing the sector, they can and should give support to some of the following. Cut of free duty concessions on our packaging materials. The processes should be easier and the policies upheld. Currently, we are at the behest of the Ministry of Finance, feelings and opinions, even though it is clearly written in law. We should not be paying the same bank fees as large companies. Provide the Bureau of Standards with the cap capabilities to test for nutritional information in country. Couriers of freight forwarders should have a plan to assist, assist us in, 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 in exporting of our goods instead of telling us they do not have ship, they do not ship goods outside of the country. The list can go on. To conclude, domestic food production is a key to help us to battle a few of our health and economic problems within our country. On behalf of the agro processors, I'd like to invite interested persons, especially farmers, to join up with the St. Kitts agro processors because we can sure do with some concessions when it comes to the price of our products. Thank you very much for inviting us and do have a good day. Thank you very much, Ms. Maitris Saddam. I will now invite Ms. Victoria Berkeley the farming representative to give us some brief remarks. Good morning. Good morning, darling. How are you? Thank you. I hope you're doing great. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. I'm Victoria Barkham Berkeley, and I represent the St. Kitts Farmers Cooperative, the oldest farming cooperative in St. Kitts. We are about food security providing food security for the nation. We're composed of livestock, crop farmers, agro processors, and we grow medicinal herbs for the healing of the nation. We're encouraging other farmers to join us to help feed the nation. We wanna thank our Minister of Agriculture, Alexis Jeffers, and the Permanent Secretary, Ron Collins for organizing this great event. We are also very happy of the assistance that the farmers are now receiving from both the minister and, and the permanent secretary, especially those who are just coming on board. Many times farmers have been left out, but now we are finding that we are getting the support that we need, and we are encouraging other farmers to join the cooperative so that you too can get assistance. We also want to thank, thank Kizzy Warner, who is the cooperative specialist for the farmers, especially the St. Kitts Farmers Cooperative and the other farming cooperatives. She's been very instrumental in motivating us and helping us to achieve our goals. I want to thank you for coming out, and I hope that you enjoy yourselves. And please think about joining the St. Kitts Farmers Cooperative. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ms. Victoria. And without further ado, I welcome. Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Marine Resources, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, who is going to officially declare the Agriculture Open Day open. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremonies. I want to start by saying good morning to all of you who are gathered here this morning. Let me also recognize the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, et al., uh, Ron Dublin Collins, I also want to recognize the director, supervisors, all of the persons in the Ministry and Department of Agriculture here on St. Kitts who would have done a wonderful job to put this uh, Agriculture Open Day session together. I also want to recognize as well the team who would have journeyed from Nevis, Permanent Secretary, uh, Sergeant, Director, uh, Randy Elliott, and all of the other members who would have come to be a part of this a uh, very auspicious occasion. This morning, uh, my heart is filled with joy this morning, looking at this 
uh, layout here this morning and looking at the persons who would have come along thus far. We decided to come here to New Newtown Playfield because we felt that this year would be one of the biggest uh, showcasing of Agriculture Open Day ever. I know many occasions in the past you'd have seen large events, but I do believe because of the impact we've had on agriculture over the last two years here on St. Kitts, I believe this year is going to be one of the biggest ever. And as such, I want to thank the Permanent Secretary, Ron Collins, and his entire team for their pursuit in terms of ensuring that we bring agriculture to a level here on St. Kitts and in the Federation that we can all be proud of. But we couldn't do it by ourselves. We have done so with the buy-in from our stakeholders, our farmers, our fisher folks, our agro-processors, and all those who play an integral part in ensuring that we are realizing our, our efforts and all that we intend to achieve in agriculture, and that is sustainability, also food security, and everything that is necessary to ensure that agriculture plays an integral part in the overall development of St. Kitts and Nevis. Now I speak about sustainability and you hear that word being thrown around all the time. But what does that mean to agriculture? Here is what it means. Sustainability in agriculture means that we're seeking to achieve affordability, accessibility, and also uh, affordability, accessibility, and also um, whatever the other word is. What's the other word? Food security, that is. <laughs> it is all wrapped up in one package, whether it's affordability, accessibility, and also the overall emphasis, therefore, is food security when it's all said and done. Now, that being said, I want to say to all of us, we are here to patronize our farmers. We are here to patronize our fisher folks. We are here to take part in all of the activities on the grounds. Persons who come here to showcase what they have done also come to make some money. And as such, it is important for you to patronize our farmers and fisher folks and all of the vendors. When it's all said and done, I do believe in purchasing locally grown produce. It therefore means that we are building healthy communities. When you go to a farm and you see that farmer consume him, consuming his own produce, it therefore means it is authentic, wholesome, and he himself is testimony that it is something worthwhile consuming. So patronize our farmers. Make sure you give them that added incentive to produce more, to grow more, and to do more for all of us. So I want to say here and now that we are on the right track with agriculture. This event is one that is going to showcase what we have done over the last year and over the last two years at least. So from here on in, I want you to continue to support agriculture and support our efforts. And I want us all to have a wonderful open day, 2022. This is the 27th staging. Let this be the best ever. And so at this point, I want to uh, issue the charge to all of us to have a safe and wonderful and profitable Open Day event 2022. May you start to sell what you have brought to sell. May you continue to do what you have always intended to do, and that is to be committed to the task of ensuring that agriculture continues to be the main pillar of our economic thrust here in the Federation. So let us go on out and have a wonderful Agriculture Open Day 2022. May God continue to bless us all and continue to bless this entire Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Alexis Jeffers, for your remarks. At this time, I want you all to know all of the vendors that you are free to sell your produce, your goods, your services. And I am going to take you on a brief tour of all of the stalls. Of course, you know that we are live on YouTube and Facebook, so share the live. I also want to 
remind you all that EK, the real right here, is going to lead you through the rest of this morning's proceedings. And all of the announcements that you're going to be looking forward to hearing will come from Mr. EK. All right. So have a wonderful 27th annual Agriculture Open Day. We want to thank you all so much again for turning out in your numbers very early. And I hope to see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Check, check, yeah.
divide up style. Slaves on the wide wire. Why 
try to make I am happy Really I don't know If it was up to them my friend We would never see the sun or the snow Through that mystical communication we did We keep on coming together I love to see brothers and sisters Looking out for one another That's the way it should be Not contrary Stop tearing down each other Rasta free the people over here. Over here. Hola. Hey. Oh. Take us more than easy. Hola. Only Rasta Stop. can liberate the people over here. And that is true. Don't let them fool you. Don't believe for a minute that they are with you to free the people Over hills and valleys too Don't let them fool you Don't believe for a minute they don't like you Why try to make I unhappy? Really I don't know If it was up to them my friend We would never see the sun or the snow that mystical communication we did We keep on coming together I love Just what is some uplifted music, you know what I mean? Looking up Country machine there Mother, That's the way Reggae style Not contrary Little while we got hell for ya Down each other Right down till no vibes, no? To free the people Over hills and vibes Five star, you there? Don't let them fool Easy. you Don't believe one minute What is the nice reggae music, I feel like To free the people Oh. Over hills and valleys too Don't let them fool you Don't believe That's what's up on the thing, man They are with you so. I just won't do You just behaving like they want you to, yeah I say Our right dance is much different from ignorance And I know you feel the same way too Many live this life without having a clue No reason why they are so sad and blue Blessings to go, so much things to do not a moment to reflect on the cycle of life, yes. Don't free the people over hills and valleys too. Don't let them fool you. Don't believe for a minute that they are with you. To free the people over hills and valleys too. Don't let them fool you. Don't believe for a minute. Without this, God is my strength.
Shaggy just play a bad tune. Yeah. 
We not a in a Babylon kingdom. We go back them bread. Why state and company? They must snipe for all of them. State and company. They must snipe for all of them. Agriculture Open Day. We start right here at the Department of Culture and I'll speak with Mr. Troy Biff Mills right now. Hello, good morning, Mr. Mills. Good morning, how are you? Let's come this way and shoot this way. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. how are you, Shaira? I'm okay, and how are you? I'm blessed, highly favored, giving thanks, thank you. Okay, so I let's have your song here. What are we seeing here? First off, I must thank the Department of Agriculture for this initiative. I think it's a wonderful idea, and I must also thank you for allowing us to be part of it. We believe the culture in St. Kitts and Nevis is perhaps one of the best kept secrets. Strangely, I'll say that, because a lot of people only see us as dealing with carnival, calypso, folklore, but we're a lot more than that. To put things in perspective, we are responsible for researching and documenting who we are as a St. Kitts and Nevis people, ensuring our children growing up know about it, our today people know about it, and remind those, the elderly, about it. To prepare those for when you get your children and your grandchildren, they will know who we are as a St. Kitts and Nevis people. So that is what we are here to do, to enlighten people of what, what we do at the Department of Culture Plus. We have something called the St. Kitts and Nevis Creative Industry Registry, where we're trying to capture ideas to everyone in the creative and cultural industry. And we know we're not going to get everyone. So we could have an idea of who is doing what, in what sector, how many dancers we have, how many persons selling sugar cake, for example. And 
We have embarked on a new initiative, the Intangible Cultural Heritage. We were the first country in the English-speaking Caribbean to successfully submit a proposal to UNESCO where we got the project worth $250,000 about. UNESCO provided $100,000 and the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, their input was $150,000 US. So we are now embarking upon a policy to deal with all of this and we've submitted our proposal and we're very optimistic it will be accepted and that proposal is worth some two hundred and ten thousand dollars with UNESCO providing ninety one thousand and we're providing the same government Davis providing a hundred and nineteen thousand that is if the match is right so we're here to bring an awareness to people and uh, so far, we are pleased. We believe we, it's now after 11. And we think we have been very successful because we've been able to interact with almost all of the schools that have come to preschool, high school, and the primary school. And they're very excited. And hopefully, they'll be able to go home and say, Mommy, I want to be a master. And Mommy, I want to be a drummer. Mommy, I want to be a dancer. Which is what we're trying to achieve as well. Thank you very much. I see you have your staff here with you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you tell me who you Well, this young lady here, this is our dance specialist, Miss Marcia Jeffers. And uh, we. this is our janitor, Miss Sandra Prentice. And uh, I mentioned the ICH, Intangible Cultural Heritage. This is Miss Jacqueline Harvey. She's the manager of that section. So she will be responsible for driving the policy, etc. when we do get it. And one or two of our staff there around visiting the other booths, collecting information. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, it's our pleasure and I'm hoping that I'll be able to see you doing a number one stage, doing some dancing or something. I will try. Okay. <laughs> thank you again. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, so that was the Department of Culture. And so we're moving on to another booth here. And I like the lovely patrons here to step forward. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. And I can see here that this is the Department of Environment. So Department of Environment, step right up to the plate. The people want to know what's happening at your booth, at your stall. Hello, good morning. I know this face. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my very lovely friend, Linnell Bonaparte. Linnell, how are you? Good morning. I'm good. Okay, so tell us about your stall here this morning. So today we are talking about invasive species, invasive species. They are species from our country, but they came from other countries. Why they are invasive is because they compete with our native species. They don't have any natural predators, so they compete. Um, one of the most common ones that we all know is the green velvet monkeys, which most of us hate even the farmers. So we are just educating um, persons in the public today about this, these species and what we are doing and what we plan to do. Yes. Can you tell us about what you have here on the table? Okay. So here we have some quarantine pests. about the giant African snail. It's not here, thank God for that, but I know it is in some Caribbean countries and it will eat most of everything. Is there a possibility that we could um, get invaded by this? If we are not careful, if we let people bring in foods that aren't checked by and the quarantine department by customs then it's possible that we can get these pests coming here but more to the species that environment we are focusing on they are in front of the table we have so we have wild tamarind black rats indian mongoose fire ants Pacific lionfish, coral creeper, brown rats, green monkeys, the tropical bantic, which is an agriculture pet, and then we have the pink hibiscus mealybug. So these are just a few species that the environment is focusing on, but we 
felt that Evan had to our table to add some of the agricultural pests to help persons connect with them. Okay. Are you giving any, are you are you having any giveaways today? Uh, we have some bottles and pens from our presentations. We are asking persons questions and once they can answer, yes, we give them a bottle. Would you like to try, Shire? Okay, let me try, let me try, let me try. <laughs> She's putting me on the spot, but I'm going to try to see if I could win something. I must warn you, I don't really have much luck with these things, but we'll see how this goes. This is an easy activity. You just have to match, read properly, Shiro. Right? Read properly. You have to get six of the six and you get a bottle. So easy, easy, easy. So I have to match these. I think I might have to ask Mr. John James here for some assistance because I'm not sure I know what I'm doing here. But okay, so you say I have to match um, the, the words with the picture? Yes. Okay, so do I draw a line across? Yes, do that. Okay, so Mr. James, I'm going to draw a line across the paper to match and see if I could win a prize. So I have in invasive alien species matching game here at the Department of Environment Tent. And I have to see which one of these is fire ants. Okay, so it looks like this is fire ants here. Right here. Okay, and it says Indian mangoes. This looks like Indian mangoes. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Don't judge me, guys. <laughs> I'm just guessing as I go along. Okay, so this is a coral creeper. We will skip that because I have never heard of this before in my life. This one here, obviously, is the green monkey. That is a well-known pest. And then, they, oh, I should know this one. The Department of Marine Resources talks about this one all the time. That's right up my alley. So that's Pacific lionfish. And then we have the mealybug, and I'm not sure which one of these is the mealybug because this looks very pretty. So I'm going to make a guess and make this the mealybug. And then the oh lord, I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, this one might be the mealybug. And then oh lord, I have, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I think I left something out. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, I think this is the best that I can do. So let's see if I actually have something. So did I get them right? Oh, please, please, please. <laughs> did I? I got them right! My first prize for today, ladies and gentlemen. I won myself a lovely bottle from the Department of Environment. Thank you very much, Linnell. Congratulations, Shira, and thank you for visiting our booth. We encourage everyone to come and learn as much as they can. Thank you very much again, and we hope to see you again tomorrow. Yes. Before we move, though, I want to show the people something really quickly. As we were talking about the species, that right there is a corn snake. to stay too long on this one so i will run away <laughs> thank you very much again so that was the department of environment and what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the next booth and so we're at the next stall here we are live on youtube and facebook step right up and tell us what your name is and tell us about your booth um my booth is, is uh, called the business is called mystic vibes and I do handcrafted jewelry. Um, and I sell flags, banners, uh, rings, t-shirts, etc. Okay, is this your first agriculture open day? Excuse me? Is this your first open day? No, I come every year. Every year? Every year. Okay. But of course, you know, because this is the first time at the New Town Play Field, the first time for you here. Yes, yeah, my first time this year. So can you tell me about the beads that you have here? What are these items? Okay, um, these beads are called tri beads. Um, I make them in different patterns. Um, sometimes country flags, sometimes school colors. Because I make a special every year for school students. The only anyone is five dollars. No matter how much it costs me, I only charge them five dollars. That's what my way of giving back. Okay, can you give us a contact number just in case anyone wants to call you? Yes, it's 668-2309 and 
and the business is called Mystic Vibes. Thank you very much again, and I wish you all the best. Nice. Okay. So we're going to move on down to the next stall, and we have here what looks like the St. Christopher and Nevis Scrabble Academy, and it looks like there is an activity that is actually ongoing here. So I'm going to try to see if I could get the attention of the gentleman here. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Professional Scrabbler, hi. Good morning. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube. And I noticed that you are the St. Christopher and Nevis Scrabble Academy. Okay, so this is the first time I'm actually hearing about the Scrabble Academy. So can you tell us your name and about the Academy? My name is Paul Benjamin. I'm the coordinator of the St. Christopher and Nevis Scrabble Academy. The Scrabble Academy aims to teach everyone the world games. So they come to enrich your world power. I all kinds of world games. And we encourage everybody to come along and play any kind of word that we want to play. It's good for children to help them spell words correctly, to pronounce words correctly, to know the meaning of new words and to know new words actually. It's a very good game for young people. Okay, so I see that you have a few items here on the table. So let's start here. Tell me what's happening here. All your different problem. The original trouble, Bible edition trouble, trouble trickster. Scrabble Up World, Super Scrabble, Power Tile Scrabble, Turbo Slam Scrabble, Scrabble Flip, Scrabble Slam, Scrabble Bubble, we have World Ways, we have Scrabble, World Shout, World Around, Express, we have Jaduku. So all okay, so so this one is this one is new to me. So is this one. So tell me, what what is Jabuku? Explain Jabuku. It's a word game. You have to write the tag and you form the word in whatever you want. Okay, can you show us? Let's take a look and see. Here are the tiles. You put them out, and whatever tiles you have, you take them to form word. You take a particular animal letter, you may have 20, 20 letters, and with the 20 letters you form a word. Take up dog, you put P-U-T foot. That'll be your word, P-U-T foot. And of course you have the letter, you can to play a word continually. Okay. Yes. So can this game be played between more than two persons? Up to four persons, but two to four persons, yes. Okay. That is wonderful. Yes. I noticed that you have some children here behind you, so are you teaching them how to yes, play? Yes, they learn to play the word game, yes. So we're talking about a simple one, the card game, because we know children of card, so they come and play the card, and it's pretty easy. And after a poem I wrote about this table game, right there in the front. Oh, a poem. oh there's, a, there's a poem right here. Nah. It's called, the word game called Scrabble. Okay, and I see that you have, it's, you have three paragraphs here. Did you write this? Yeah, I wrote it. I wrote the actual poem, yes. To explain the word game in a poetic form. Yes. Okay, thank you so much for your time. I have one more question for you. So are you going to be training the children? Yeah, I want to go to school as well. So, so is this going, going to be happening right now? Is it happening all day today? Yeah, all day today. Okay. Yes. So in the future, I want to go to school as well and the college as well and incorporate it by the curriculum and the school activity. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much again. You're welcome. I wish you all the best. Thank you. And we hope to see you again tomorrow. Nice. Okay, so that was the Scrabble tent there, and that is by the St. Christopher and Nevis Scrabble Academy. Now, I'm walking into what seems like a very large display by the, the Taiwanese, oh my, I'm being attacked by the flag. <laughs> but yes, okay, so the Taiwanese have their display, and we're gonna stroll right on down, and we're going to find out what's going on here. Hi, good morning. Good morning, so we are live on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, cool. Yes, and so we want to um, give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. Okay. And also to tell us about your booth. Okay. Maybe I go outside. Yes, yes, sure, you could come outside. That would make it even easier for us. Okay, so tell me your name. My name is Joyce, Tom. Joyce. And I'm 
working on Taiwan Technical Mission, ICDF. So this tent actually is we want to promote our projects in St. Kitts and Nevis. By the way, we are from Taiwan. Okay. Okay, so we take a Taiwan Technical Mission here, we have uh, several different projects. So we have agriculture project, and there we also have public health projects. And uh, my project is about recycling. Okay. Yeah, so here we would like to use this activity to tell people what is recycle and uh, how to do recycle. So here we set up some games, so help teach the children how to sort the waste at their home. So it's by different category you can see, right? Yeah, so you're teaching the children how to recycle. Yes. Wonderful. And because, you know, normally we have a lot of garbage at home, but actually sometimes we make a misunderstand. It should be recycled or not. Okay? So we will use some games to let people know. And not only that, but after recycle last, we would like to teach people. You can, we also want to tell people when we do a recycle, what is working. You're showing us now what's on the table. Okay, so these are items that actually are made from recycled goods. And what we're going to see here on the table is exactly what is produced when you recycle. This is a recyclable bottles, metal but this new bottle. So actually recycle is trying to make the garbage as new product. Okay, so this is made by new product. The paper. The, even the tissue is made by waste paper, right? So we would like to use this opportunity to show people when you do recycle, it's very meaningful yeah. because it's not could go into the garbage landfill and it, it will be a new life, right? And also we use this opportunity to tell people next month, June, we will do a recycling in the St. Kitts and the Nevis. Okay. So in St. Kitts, every week we will be calling and also the best buy in the, the downtown. Yes, yes, Okay. Yes. So every week we will set up the tent there. So we encourage people to bring the recyclable for us. So okay. in the beginning we will recycle the plastic the bottles and the tents. Okay. And, and, and on what days you want them to bring? For us, and we also design some re reward. So if you bring a recyclable for us, you will get some point, the stick point, and then later you can exchange to some gift. So encourage people to join with us. We also create some websites. So we will announce the, all the recycling, facility, uh, recycling information, schedule, location, and the reward information there. So people can catch more information. Okay. Yeah. So persons can visit your website to learn more about okay. your recycling program. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Okay, and I see that there is a game that is being played here. This is also part of the Taiwan Technical Mission booth. Yes, correct. So last will be agriculture uh, agricultural project. So please. We'll show some agricultural knowledge for farmers, also for all the people. So we design some Q&A, so teach people how to plant the vegetables and uh, some information. So this is also the weather station we made here, and it's a monitor the weather situation. Oh, so this is how, this is how, okay, so we want to show the people, so this right here is how you measure the wind. Yeah, 
So it's not only wind, temperature, and the soil, you know, all the weather information. So we have the database. It was set up in the, uh, the St. Kitts and the Nevis Island. So we catch the data, and then we will tell to the people by daily. Daily we will announce the information to people or oh, what's the weather situation. So the farmer will know, okay, how's the best weather for our farm, you know. So that is the information. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much again, Joy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's been a pleasure. Okay, so that was the Taiwan technical mission. We're going to take a quick break, but we're going to bring so much more to you when we get back. So stick and stay. We are here live at the 27th Annual Agriculture Open Day. And it won't let me go. And I'm a man who don't like to swear, but I hate the sound of being alone. Mm -hmm. I am myself to no one there, and no one heard at all, not even the chair. Say why I am myself. 
cherish every moment that we should be together. It's so long we've been in love. Oh, girl, me and you left me here so all alone. Yeah, now you're here, I won't let you go. No, we'll forever let this feeling flow. Right here at the Newtown Playfield at the 27th annual Agriculture Open Day. And obviously, you can tell that action is definitely taking place right here. We're going to move on to the other stalls that we have because we have so much to cover and so little time. So, we'll do our best and head right on over here to what looks like the Department of Marine Resources, St. Kitts and Nevis. And um, as we can see here, we have one individual at the post. Hi, good morning. Can you tell us what's happening here? We are live on YouTube and Facebook. 
Oh, you, you're not ready yet? I'm ready, but Okay, I'm well, we could ready. always swing and come back. Okay, we'll swing and come back. Don't worry, but there's no escaping. We'll always swing and come back. Okay, so we're not ready yet here, but we will head right back on over to this booth. We have more action taking place right over here at the SKN Reef Guardians station. Hi, good morning. Hello, good morning, good morning. We are live on YouTube and Facebook, and this is quite the perfect time, so say hello. Hi. Okay, so we're, we're, we're here to see what's actually taking place. What are you guys looking at? Tell us what's happening here. Okay, so I work with FAO. I'm National Project Coordinator, and I lead um, this project that we have at Mexic Project where we invest in, in aquaponics with the local farmers in St. Kitts and Nevis. So we're demonstrating here a little system we have where it's an aquaponics system. It combines aqua hydroponics and agriculture into a system which uses 90% less water than if you had to grow something in the earth, which is, you know, quite economical from a business standpoint. So we have the fish, which circulates the nitrates, everything the plants needs to grow. So you don't have to buy any fertilizers. It's an organic system, you know, somewhat. And it pumps filtered water with oxygen back into the system. So it circulates and it's very economical and you produce lots of fish and plants, you know, for the economy. So this is aquaponics. Okay, and we have another section here. Yeah, no, this okay. is aquaculture where you're just farming fish. And it's very simple because all you require is a pond, anything that can hold water to raise the fish. And it's just fish. So if you look at the poster here, we're showing you examples of different systems. You can have a pond. You could even use a natural pond to raise fish, which happens quite often. Or you can just, even in the sea, you have a cage to hold your fish and you raise them and harvest them because we're having issues where climate change is causing a problem to the fishes where they're unable to produce enough fish for the population. So this helps alleviate that problem, okay? Nice. So we have the fish here and we actually have our farmer who does this in St. Kitts, Snapper Farm, which is located at Connery. Um, Dr. Brown, Dr. Brown. Oh, is this Dr. Brown right here? Hi, Dr. Brown. Is this Dr. Brown right here? Hello, we were just talking about the Snapper Farm, yes? Yes, so he's on our Snapper Farm and he's actually a benefit. He's going to benefit from the project. We're going to help him to expand more because you know, it's all about food security and more nutritional food for nutritional food for the, the, um, the citizens, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. So we're going to work with him. But he's here, he has a system, he's selling fish to the children. And he's here to share information, you know. There's somewhat a stigma with tilapia, but he, we're here to show you its safe practices we incorporate when raising this fish. Okay, so when okay. you see it on the market, look out for his products, tilapia. He uses salt water to raise his fish, which is quite unique. And it's very tasty from my experience. It's a very tasty fish. So look for his tilapia fish on the market sometime soon. Nice. Okay, okay so I see that you have your setup right over here. Yeah, well, yes. All, all, the, all the fish around here are, are from the, the farm. Okay. But that is just to demonstrate the um, growing, growing vegetables, you know, and the water system. And what we what we have here is a tilapia, which is actually a freshwater out of Africa. But what we have converted in the research is to full strength seawater. So the, the project is Snapper which is the acronym is the St. Kitts and Nevis Aquaculture Pilot Project and Environmental Research. So that is what we do. And um, we have farm gate sales. We have a little restaurant there also that people can come on and, you know, um, taste it. Can you, can you give us a contact number before we wrap up? Oh, 667-1410. 1410. And we do take the schools for the, the wet lab sessions. They come through, you know. And we also do the tours. Okay. The tours. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Thank you so much for giving us the time. You're very welcome. And I wish you all the best. Okay. okay. So we're going to move on now to the next stall over here. And we see some discussion happening. Okay, let me move this way. The SKN Reef Guardians. So we're going to take a quick look and find out what is happening at this booth. Let's just squeeze our way in here. Hi, good morning. Sorry to interrupt you guys, but we are live on YouTube and Facebook. 
and we are just stopping by really quickly to see what is happening at your stall. Can you tell us what's happening here at your stall? And tell us your name as well. My name is Tricia King. I'm a marine biologist at the Department of Marine Resources. She did a shock face. <laughs> so what we're doing is encouraging positive interactions with the ocean. So we have a fun stall, a lot of beach life, a lot of fun um, little trinkets and stuff. Why are you behaving like this? As if you've got doubts inside Baby, there's no reason to hide Oh me, oh my Pretty baby, don't be shy Oh me, oh my I'm gonna tell you why Oh me, oh my Pretty baby, don't be shy Oh me, oh my I'm gonna tell you not only good looking, you like to taste so fine cuisine. For you that make vacancy, baby, you've got your PhD. Oh me, oh my, pretty baby, don't be shy. Oh me, oh my, I'm gonna tell you why. I will always do the good I can, for a hatred I can.
them. Please let them know what the name of your business is. Hi, my name is David. It's Marcia's Ivy Pop. You can come down and get your ice lollies. The best taste in ice lollies in sink is the sweetest. The cheat to beat the heat. Come and get your ice lollies right here at the Agriculture Open Day. Yes. Thank you. And if they wanted to call you. Okay, my number is 664-3629 or 763-4468. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, oh, that, oh, that would be really nice. Um, maybe a sorrel, I don't want to surprise me. Yes, a nice sorrel. Oh, yes, okay. I like this one. Yes, oh, this is nice. Okay, oh my god, wait. Woo! John, how much of these you want? Let me get a sorrel too. Wow. Oh, this is nice. No, we're, we're, we're patronizing, you know. Yes, we're patronizing. Nice. Is a dollar? One dollar. You want more? Okay, so we'll come back. We'll swing and come back. Yes, because this is very. This is. You said the passion fruit. Listen, the passion fruit mango is amazing. So we're gonna swing and come back for more. Yes, nice. Oh my, I was trying to go with both. <laughs> This is yes. This is the mango passion, and we have the sorrel as well. Yes, <laughs> we're enjoying, and it's it's definitely beating the heat because it's quite hot. But this is nice. Make sure we give you what you need. We love it. So we have coconut sauce, of sima, chocolate, mango, passion fruit, sorrel, goosberry, tamon, and the list goes on. Thank you very much. All right, same to you. Nice. Nice. So if you're trying to beat the heat. You. Yeah, oh no, trust and believe me, we are coming back because this, the, of course, we have more to eat and we won't be forgetting, especially this one. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on over here where it looks like there are health consultations happening. Hi, good morning. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. And I see that you have something set up here, but you have to tell me about it. So tell me, what is your name? Uh, my name is Brian. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing the, we, ha we have the health things here, and mm -hmm. we have to do the high and weight major, and, and we will measure your waist and hip. And we also have the blood pressure, blood sugars check. And, we have, and also over there, we, we also have the kidney check. Okay. Yeah. And when you finish all the tests here, and I will do the consultation for you to tell you all about the, your result and, to, and give you some advice to mm -hmm. keep you more healthier. Yeah. Okay, so you're the one who gives the bad news if I'm a little bit overweight. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would do uh, more, more, uh, more uh, light. Examination result? Yeah. Uh, ah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. okay, so you said over here you have blood pressure checks? Blood pressure and sugar check over okay, there. Okay, let's take a quick look over here and see what we have. We have blood pressure checks over here. Okay, hi, good day. So we just came to a peep and see what it is that you have that's going on. So can you tell me about the procedures here? Well, here we are doing blood pressure and blood sugar checks. Um, you want to know how it's done? Of course. So here... We ask the client to give us their finger, mm -hmm. this here. <laughs> and we, of course, we clean the area, mm -hmm. and it's just a little small prick, nothing much, you're barely going to feel anything already, put in, you're putting a little needle here, mm -hmm. and you have your blood sugar machine, you clean the area, uh -huh. make sure it's in and it's on. And you test it? Yeah, I mean, okay. just a little prick. You feel it? <laughs> no, she didn't feel a thing. She was gentle, right? I hope she was gentle. <laughs> Pretty gentle. And here we go. The normal range is between 80 to 120. Okay, but we don't want to know your results. No, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> yes, it's confidential. So we won't peep. But thank you so much for showing us your procedure here. And we're going to take a quick look and see what else you have to offer. Right? Thank you so much.
Oh, this is okay. We have height and weight over here. Oh, I know this face. Yes, we have height and weight, and this will tell you your body mass index, mm -hmm. whether you're overweight, whether you're underweight, whether you're obesity, or all that. Oh, and this you know? is your scale. So, right this here. is our scale. Okay. And our Okay, look at this cute scale. This is a very cute little scale right here. Oh, I'm not stepping on because I don't want them to know. <laughs> I won't be stepping on the scale, not on camera, right, Mr. James? <laughs> okay, nice. So what else do you, do you have? Okay, so here we'll do your height, weight, your hip, and your waist okay. um, measurements. And then you will move on to different stations as you go along. Awesome. Right. Okay, so do you have more on the other side? Yes, yes. Okay, so yes, we'll, so we'll run right over there to see what else is taking place. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, there is another tent over here. And it looks like this is the vaccination tent. Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. And we are just using this opportunity to let persons know what exactly is happening here at the Agriculture Open Day. And I noticed that you have a vaccination banner out front. So can you tell me what vaccinations persons can actually come and get at this booth? Okay, so we are giving tetanus vaccine and the hepatitis B vaccine. Those two that we are giving today. And many need to be covered by this, so we are asking the folks to come on over to the nurses' um, tent and be vaccinated. Okay, are you going to be here all day? Yes, we are. Okay, and tomorrow? Yes, we are. Okay, lovely. So for those of you who need to come and get your vaccinations, please don't hesitate. Come right on down to the vaccination tent and get your vaccine. Uh oh, <laughs> nice. Okay, so we're going to run away really quickly. We're going. Oh oh oh. Oh yes, you have more to add. Yes, we have more. Not, not okay, wait, hold on, hold on. You said mm -hmm. not just vaccination alone. We're also doing breast examination and we're also doing prostate. Oh well, you didn't tell me all of yes, that. Yes, sorry that because you mentioned about the vaccine. So oh, sorry yes. about that. Okay, so where you where, where is this taking place? Right this is here. here. Oh, in your very private area. Very private. It's very private. So. Folks, come on over to the stand where the nurses are and mm -hmm. be vaccinated and also have your breast examination prostate. and your prostate test. Okay? Prostate and, and breast, breast for yes. both female and male. Yes. Right. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so if you heard that, repeat it one more time. If you want to get your what exams done? Your breast examination and your prostate, you can come on over to the nurses' booth. Okay, very good. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You're welcome. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are running low on fuel here and we are going to run all the way over. <laughs> we are going to run back over to the ice lolly tent because trust and believe me, this is the best way to beat the heat. Oh man, and I... I... Oh, you have more to the back? Oh, oh, we have soursop, chocolate, sea moss, coconut, tadalos, tadalos. Dollars is these milk ones. Nice. Nice. Yeah, real tasting. Everything real. Okay, so what did you guys come to come come to get? You came to get local ice lollies too? Okay, so okay, let me see here now. So what flavor you had before? Saril? Okay. Just let you know that it's free, okay? Let the people know that it's free. Okay, Everything thank is free, the vaccines are free, and the, 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 the Thank you. Okay. Okay, so this is... Special fruit. Oh, give me another flavor. Rosemary. Uh-huh. Cherry. Mm-hmm. And tamarind. And tamarind. Yeah, okay, one, nice. One and a tamarind here. Yeah. Thank Cherry. you very much. Okay, so hold this one. Oh, okay. Well, I don't mind, you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, oh yes, yes, you could open one for me, please. This red. This is cherry. Yes, the cherry. Oh, thank you. Oh, this is good stuff. I'm telling you, I've never had the local ice yes. lollies before, but yes. this is. Wow, I've yes. never had these before, but yes. good stuff. You see, I'm having both at the same time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.
what the plant quarantine unit is offering here. Hi, good morning. Hey, good morning. So we are live on YouTube and Facebook and we are visiting all of the stalls so that you can tell us a little bit about what is happening at your booth. So start by introducing yourself, state your name, and tell us about your booth. Hi, good day. My name is Janelle Kelly. I work in the plant quarantine unit here at the Department of Agriculture. What we do here exactly, we do inspections in terms of plants and plant-related products that come into the country, as well as regulated articles, which include sand, soil, and aggregates. Also, we would do inspections for exports. If you want to, for example, take tea bush back to you when you're going back, for example, to the US or to the UK, or if you want to take um, plants or produce, and you would come by us, we would inspect them. We make sure that they're free of soil, plant pests, and any sort of um, type of dirt and then we would issue a certificate once it's free from that so for example all the supermarkets are bringing their produce if um, a development wants to bring in plants we would do the inspection we also do pest surveillance which means we would go out in the community to the different farms and in some instances around in the community and we would um, take information in terms of if a particular pest that we're interested in if it's present or absent in the country we have to do this in order to maintain our our lists for the country. We need it in order to have um, trade facilitation between us and our neighbors. So we have to be aware of what we have so we could share that information and so we're able to trade our information um, in terms of what can move between the two countries. Right? And so here today we have plenty of information in terms of pests and diseases. We have information on control and management options that could be utilized. For example here we have a brochure here about the diamondback moth. And if you would have been lucky enough to um, be part of our initiative that we had earlier in the year between January and March, we would have been giving away some seedlings to um, backyard gardeners. And one of the things that were given away was cabbage. And we, would found, we have found that some persons would have complained about pests. And the most popular one for cabbage is the diamondback moth. And so this is some really good information here on the control and management procedures that you could engage in your, um, as yourself as a home owner. Okay. Right? And we have a little game here, you know, match the different pests and insects here. So you have to read the speech bubble and then you'll get an idea of what it is. And if you win, if you match all, you get a prize. And we have some examples here in our little cage in terms of the different pests and diseases that we have. So this is an example of the diamond, the diamond back moth in cabbage. Oh. You see it has holes in the leaves and sometimes it's um, transparent and we will call them window panes and we'd see the lava tunneling. We also have examples of sweet potato weevil damage in the center where we have that little pesky weevil that goes into the sweet potato. It causes holes, we call that tunneling. And so it really makes the crop unmarketable. So that's something of course we'd want our farmers to be aware of in order for them to be able to control the pest adequately. Also very popular for backyard um, gardeners, homeowners, we have the croton plant. And what we see a lot of it on it is the croton scale. It's a tiny little green insect. You would see it on the stem and on the backs of the leaves. And so we want persons to be aware of it because it's becoming more popular. And there are some simple procedures you can take. You can, you know, mix some soapy water with hot pepper. That's a simple home remedy. And of course, it's a more organic option for you. You can use neem oil. You can crush the neem leaves or you can purchase the neem oil preparation from the store, which is very good to help with that. Or if you want to use something a little more um, stringent and something that would um, give you a quick knockdown, you can use something like Actara or Fastac, which you can get from the department or TDC or any other provider. And we also have here an example of um, mealybugs, the pink hibiscus mealybug. We have sour sop and we have sugar apple here. And so these are quite common. We see them all the time. A person always asks, well, how do I get rid of them? And you can use the same preparations. You can use um, the hot pepper mixed with the soapy water, or you can even use horticultural oil, insecticidal soap. Those are more um, biological. They are more eco-friendly. Okay. So those are some good options for home safer. owners, yes. safe options to engage in. So. Thanks, and something very important we wanted you to know about here. You come across here where we have the luggage. Okay, so you're going to, oh, there's, okay, so we have something here that 
Let's see. Traveling with tea bush fruits or vegetables. Right. Uh huh. We have so many people who want to take back dry tea leaves. They want to take back fruits and vegetables when they're traveling. But you need to know that you need to come to the Department of Agriculture. You need to speak to the plant quarantine unit because you have to know if the item is allowed into the country where you're going. If it is, we examine the items. We make sure they're free from soil, from pests and diseases. And then we would issue what's called a phytosanitary certificate to you. And then you'll be able to travel with the items. Another important important thing we want people to take note of is if you're importing seeds, plants and vegetables, these kind of commodities, you really need to get permission from the Department of Agriculture. We have a very big uptick in what we call um, e-trade, so a lot of persons are going online, they're going on Amazon, they want to order seeds, but you really need to come and um, get an import permit because some will not be allowed. For example, we're now seeing a new pest in tomato, it's called the tomato brown rugos fruit virus and it travels in seeds. So we have to ensure that the place that you're getting these commodities from are certified pest free and then we'll be able to allow them into the country and then you'll be able to plant them and have your plants and pest free. Okay, awesome. So can you give us contact information for those persons who may be interested in contacting the quarantine unit? Of course, you can contact us at 467-1826 or 1827 or you can drop us an email at plantquarantine at gov.kn. And of course, if you're in the neighborhood, you can visit us at Lagreet at the department and we will share this information with you so you can be aware of all the import requirements. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ms. Kelly. Okay, we had quite a lot here from the plant quarantine unit and I'm going to quickly take a break here because I want to get a piece of my ice lolly in. Mr. James, you're not going to work me too hard today. I'm trying to beat the heat and I don't even know where to start. I think I bit off more than I could chew, but we're going to get through it. I have two ice lollies over there from the stall, but for my word. I try to drink one at a time, so I'm going to do my best. Okay, so as you can see here, we have some lovely plants right over here. Mr. James is going to show you at the Crops Division Station. We can see Moringa, we can see Gooseberry, we can see Cashew, we can see St. John Wort, we could see Bread Nuts, Soursop, Guava, I mean, you name it. It is right over here at the Crop Division and Propagation Unit. Wow. So we're going to find out what's happening over here and see if we could get some information about what's going on. Hi, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Oh, no, 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 no. We're dropping by your booth because we are live on Facebook and on YouTube. And we are visiting all of the stalls to find out what it is that you are offering at the Agriculture Open Day. I know your face, Miss Avril. So I know that you are the best person to speak to. So can you tell us really quickly what is taking place here? What do you have? What are you selling? Let the people know. Well, I'm selling seedlings. Come, come, come show us. I'm selling seedlings. You can get a mixed tray. Um, different varieties. We're selling balance, different varieties as well. We have some for the family and some for single home. Come along. Onions, very affordable. Come along and get what you want. Okay, so take me through it again. So for those people who want onions, watermelon, what else you say you and have? guess what? The melons are only a dollar a pound. A steal of a deal for today. Take, huh? Wow. One dollar per pound. And I don't think they're going to get it any cheaper. Mm -hmm. A dollar a pound. Can't go, can't go wrong. Okay, so a dollar per pound for the onions and a dollar per pound for the watermelon. It does not get any cheaper than that. So better. you've heard it. Or oh, you have even better at the Agriculture Open Day. Okay, so for those of you who are looking for onions and watermelon and you're trying to get your seedlings, please come on down to the Crops Division Station where you can get all of the different commodities that you need. We're going to run quickly over here to the next stall as we continue going through. And we have here the Foy's Outreach Center. So this is the Foy's Outreach Center that we see right over here. Hello, good morning. Okay, so we're going to take a quick look at your stall here and have you explain to us. But first, introduce yourself, state your name and your position. My name is Lamar Yeward. I am at the Soil Lab. 
I am a lab technician. So what we do is we what we do is we go to different farmers and we visit them, we collect the soil, we give them a soil report. And when we finish we we give them this book and this book explains everything from nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, EC, pH, temperature, texture. We have the nitrogen map of St. Kitts. We have different maps. We have nitrogen deficiency recommendation. We have soil EC. We have pH. And we explain everything. Temperature, soil texture. Yeah, this okay. is a this is a diagram of what is the best soil to plant in each for each crop. So wood crops they prefer sandy soil so they could go bigger because the soil is loose. We have pepper where they prefer loamy soil because it's rich in um, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. We also have a drone service where we visit different farmers and we take a picture of the so the land and measure it for them and this is all the areas that I measured so you're the one you so you use the drone shots yeah to show them uh-huh yeah so this you are the drone operator yeah okay what else do you have in this is so the, map of St. Kitts? yeah the backyard farmers I visited this is a map of all the other farmers like okay. livestock plant where we land management look for fire damage and we feel stations like need must and tabernacle will be center so that's about it. That's my boot. Nice. Thank you so much for giving us all the info here. And we move right along to the Foy's Outreach Center. And here at the Foy's Outreach Center, I can see that we have quite a number of commodities. I found a dollar, guys. <laughs> it must be my lucky day because I found a dollar. Okay, so here at the Foy's Outreach Center, we're going to allow the extension officer responsible for that district to tell us what exactly is taking place here at this stall. So introduce yourself for us. Good day, um, Mr. Weeks, extension officer for this district. Um, this, this, we are displaying now uh, woods and tubers that we go here in St. Kitts. We have, we have today Dasheen, Edo's and Tumawik, uh, special prizes, gift packages, um, special packages of mix, Tumawik, Dashin and Edos, and if you want Edos by yourself, you can get it like that. But we have, we are we all here from the Fies Outreach Center. Nice, awesome. Okay, and I see that you have a little setup yeah, here. A little, um, a little small display of uh, a farm with the solar, uh, a new solar um, animal protection system that we have promoting. But this is just a small scale model um, of a farm with the solar solar protection from monkeys, pigs. And other animals. We, there's an official, there's an official uh, um, display on the other side here. We could look at it later, but this is just a mini, a mini display. So this is a mini module, yes, basically. Yes. Okay, this is very nice. What do you have here? This is your lettuce. Yeah, what we have it? we have many many um crops, including um lettuce, um <laughs> greens, uh -huh. and we also have some other special crops that we that, that we put. Okay. With your real soil. Yes. I like that. Yes. The module is quite realistic, man. I like that. I like that. And your little shell. Yeah, that's, it. that's the shell that we, um, we use to, um, to harvest water. Nice. Thank you so much again for your time. So we're going to... Oh, you have more to... Okay, so yeah. you're going to show us... Oh! Yeah, we have the official... Um, one, the official systems now that we, that we promote at the Department of Agriculture. So this is one of your that's official the, systems? Solar, solar system that keeps out monkeys, pigs, other animals from the farm. You could, could use it in a backyard garden. Okay. If you want, you know, backyard people will complain about monkeys coming in. And it's very cost effective, it's very cheap. Um, made up of simple things like a piece of old, a steel you could get from, the, from a construction site, a small piece of PVC or um, conduit pipe you could use, and some tie shops, and you could just set it up easy. The systems are cheap, online, and they keep up, like I said, monkeys, pigs and other animals from your farm or uh, your backyard if you want to use it in your backyard. Nice. Okay, and so what plants do you have here in the centre? Okay, we're we displaying um, some of our, our crops, we're pushing wood and tubers, so, so we got some dash in here. Uh, 
habits is a pepper, sweet pepper that appears when you put in a monkey gang it in the Kaila sweet peppers in there. If you do, when you can see the sweet pepper and the seasoned pepper. Yeah. So, you can see that it's a, it's a fact that no monkey can get in this system. So you're telling me if a monkey were to run up here where these wires are, it would shock? Yes, it, it will shock it. Uh, if, even if you have a backyard and you climb in a tree and jump over, you have to come back out, it will shock it until you get out and then you won't come back. Because the experience is just like, you know, that um, this is danger. So, um, the pigs the same thing. They come and they push on it, cattle or anything. You will shock them and... They would, they would just stay away from the area. Wonderful. Yeah. And so you have farmers who are actually using this already? Yes, this system is in place um, in District 3, especially um, I think on other, other areas, they, they are in place as well, and Nevis. But mm -hmm. they, like I said, the systems are cheap online, and the department also offering some systems to farmers once they have the, the criteria set, once they get the area clear around the farm, and they have the, the, the steel and the other, the other parts, we put a system in putting it together and we're actually donating to farmers right now. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much again for this information, Mr. Wheat. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Okay, no problem. You have anything else that you want to add before we wrap up? Well, I just want to tell the people to come out. We, we just started. We're going to be here all day and we're going to come out tomorrow again. We have lots of fruits and vegetables selling. We have the, the ground provisions selling, local ground provisions. So come out, enjoy yourself and have a good time. Awesome. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Oh, that was quite informative. A very realistic module over there by the Forest Outreach Center. And then we had the installing of the solar electric fencing, or the example of that, where we were, what were told by uh, Mr. F Mr. Weeks of the Forest Outreach Center that this system already is in place, actually, on a few farms in District 3, and that this system has been quite effective in aiding to prevent monkeys and the pigs from actually destroying the crops, the fruits and vegetables on those farms. So quite a lot of information there to take in and um, we're going to try to see how much we can actually cover today because there's quite a lot happening. I don't want to miss any of the stars because there's so much to cover. Oh, I see we have one over here. That's the engineering unit. So we're going to just briefly take a look to see what's going on here at the engineering unit and see what they have available. Hi, good morning. We are live on YouTube and Facebook and we are just stopping by your booth to see what it is that you have here on display. Can you tell us your name and then tell us what you have here at your booth? My name is Landon Williams. I have some tools just for display for the children today. Okay, so I see that you have some machinery there in the back. Okay, let's. I think we need to go around here to see if we could get better shots of the machinery. So, Landa, let me squeeze in here by you. So, I see there's machinery here. So, can you tell us? Can you tell us what we are seeing right here? That's a bell loader. They okay. used to use it way back in SSMC time, sugar factory time, to load canes. But we used to use it to like help any logs etc anything that you could handle okay nice yeah. and what is this right here the that's red a, that's a harrow the harrow is used to cut up land cut down trees to prepare the soil okay and the engineering unit is responsible for that yes okay yeah. awesome i maintain we keep maintenance of them make sure it is operational yeah. okay so you assist the farmers the... with the land clearing and the preparation that is far i mean the operators do that yes, part the operators, yeah, yeah. I, 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 deal with the operators, I help all the operators and the problems with the machines. Yeah, I deal with that. Okay, yeah. so, you're, so you're a fix-it guy then? Yeah. Okay, Landell. <laughs> nice. And this is a tractor over here. This is owned by the department? That's a banker. The one in the middle there. Uh -huh. They ask the car to plow, that to make one big bed. The other one beside it, and the tractor. That's also a plow too. But he used to make two beds. Okay, so yeah. tell me now. What is the difference between this one in the middle and this one on the end? The plows? Yes. That's what I know. They use that when they're going to plant carrots. Okay. That make a way bigger bed. Okay. The okay. one on the chuck, you know, that make a smaller bed. Ah. Medium. Yeah. So this one is specifically for carrots? Yeah, and onions. Okay, and Big onions beds. as well. Yeah. So the bigger bed is the center one, the yeah. smaller bed is the one that's on the chuck. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right, man, Landel, with the information. Thank the, you so much. Yes. It's been a pleasure. Okay, so we're going to run right along 
and see how much more we can get. This area here, we see a sign that says uh, protected agriculture, but we just wrapped up the engineering unit. So we're going to just take a quick glimpse and see what's happening. It looks like an example of a greenhouse. Maybe we could take a peep inside and see what's going on in here. I see some mesh here. Looks like, oh, there's a door. Okay, let's open the door. Cameraman, you know better than me. It smells very lovely. I smell cilantro. It looks like there's cilantro on the inside. And I'm assuming that we have these for sale as well. So if you know you're looking for cilantro to season your food, to throw on your pasta, the agriculture open there is the place to be to come and take a look and see all that is happening here at the Newtown Playfield. And these are the pieces of machinery that Landell was actually just speaking to us about. And he explained that this right here in the middle is actually used specifically for carrots and onions because it makes bigger banks. Quite interesting, I had no idea. And the one that's on the tractor here is the one that makes the smaller banks. Okay, so we're gonna move along. We have another section here. I'm not seeing a sign, but I can see that this is where organoponic agriculture takes place. Okay, so before, oh, look who we just ran into. Look who we just ran into. Okay, so before we go into that booth, I want to speak to the man himself, the minister himself, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. Mr. Minister, how are you enjoying the Agriculture Open Day? I'm having a wonderful time here, and I'm so pleased with the thought process that would have gone into uh, putting out the entire layout here. And in terms of coming here, that was the best decision that was made, and I want to thank the Permanent Secretary and all the staff, members of staff, that is. I even want to thank you for your tremendous work in communicating to the general public to let the general public know every day that we have two days left, every one day, day left, yes. that kind of thing. <laughs> I think you have done a marvelous job and irrespective of the work itself, people still needed to know what, what is intended to be done here. And people also wanted to know, well, what is going on with this event? Right. So yeah. you have done a marvelous job and Thank I must you. give you public uh, commendation Thank because you. you deserve it and I want you to continue to push the agenda of, of agriculture here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. But as I said before, um, Chaira, the whole idea of coming here to the Newtown play field was a very good one. It gives you more space, of course. It gives you a, a few more vendors an opportunity to come here and sell their produce. And I believe as the afternoon develops, you should see a lot more persons coming through into the evening and tomorrow should be a major a major um, event here at uh, the New Newtown Plainfield. And then we're hoping tomorrow night should be the climax of oh, a yes. wonderful 27th uh, hosting of this, um, this event. Okay, so have you been able to visit all of the stalls already? Yes, well, not all. Let me be, be fair and said. I've done a tour of the, um, this is the northern oh, end, the northern coming side, around to the western end, and, the west and I'm end. going around to the, to, to the other side here, okay. where most of the provisions are. They're looking healthy from a distance. It's a pity I can't buy all and take back with me. <laughs> but I'll say here publicly that person should come and patronize the vendors here because all of these produce were done, were produced locally. Yes. They were grown locally. And the fact that they were grown locally suggests to me that they are the most wholesome produce to eat. The farmers would eat their own products and that is testimony to the fact that they are locally grown and local attention was paid to these items and that is why they are so healthy to consume. So come out out and patronize because they need to be compensated for their effort. They are not just here to showcase. They are here to showcase one, yes, how wonderful the produce are, but they are also here to make some money and that is the whole idea of this event is for our farmers, vendors, fisher folks, livestock um, farmers to make money. That is their compensation for their hard work. So I'm pleased all around. Yes. And you, and you're can... going around yourself to yes, yes, speak? Yes, yes, okay. so we're going to go over uh, um, as well to the other side because we tried as much as possible to, to cover everybody. Yes, yes. Because there is so much to cover here yes, on the yes. ground, so and, much. And, and if I can say, 
Um, what warms my heart today as well too is that the schools would have made an effort to be here. There are a lot of young children here. Some of them are not paying attention though, eh? <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, but they're in an environment that is uh, one that I believe will someday be an environment that they'll come back to selling their own produce. And that is what you want to inculcate in the young children, that they can be a part of an industry where they can make money, contribute to uh, um, economic development in our country, and also be a part of the overall thrust in securing our future when it comes to food. Yeah. So they are the ones we are going to lean on, and some of the displays here are things that they should be taught about in, in a way that they can understand. Mm -hmm. Because what we have here next to us is a greenhouse, a shade house, and that is the type of agriculture that we are pushing, that protected agriculture. So it must be taught to them in a way that they can understand and they can gravitate to, so that the future to come uh, will be one that we can certainly embrace, knowing that we're going to put in the work at an early stage. So that is, I must say, uh, a good thing. And I, I commend all of the schools who would have made an effort to come and those that will come tomorrow as well. And I want to commend the ministry for reaching out uh, to the schools to encourage them to come here and be a part of this event. Yes, wonderful. Wonderful indeed. I won't keep you any longer. Keep me an ask me more if you want that. <laughs> I don't want to keep you any longer because I know you have much ground to cover. But yes, if we if we want you again, we'll come and find you, Mr. Minister. But yes, uh, we just spoke here with Honorable Alexis Jeffers, who is the Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Marine Resources, and he is having quite a time here at the 27th Annual Agriculture open day like many of the people who are also here on the grounds we have so many schools present i am so pleased to see how many schools have participated in the agriculture open day right in front of me i can see that we have schools here like irish town primary school i can see that we have what looks like the beach allen primary school i can see here what looks like Branty welsh primary I can also see we have a school that's right over here that looks like St. Paul's Primary. I mean, there are so many schools here on the grounds today. We have Bastia, you know, we have Washington Archibald High School. So many schools to cover, but um, we are inviting other schools as well to come on out. If you have not yet made your way to the Agriculture Open Day, you still have time to come on down and see what is taking place. We're gonna do our best to try to show you what's happening, but trust and believe me, it is better if you are here in person. Okay, so we're gonna try to move right along here to the next stall, and the sign here says ICA, the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture. So we're going to, we're going to step right in and find out what's going on at ICA stall. Good morning, good morning. We're not interrupting you, but we've been interrupting everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, so we just stopped by so that we could get an idea of what is happening here at your booth. So first, introduce yourself for us. Okay, my name is Sharon Jones, and I'm a technical specialist at AICA. And we're just showcasing a few of the things that are coming up within this month. We have a, a launch of a food portal, food safety portal. So we have, we have been going around trying to get some of the agro processors and other um, food um, cookers and everything that's involved in that. And then also we want to get some women to do a women's group in our culture, a women's producers group. So we've been interviewing a few women who come by to see if they're interested in joining our group. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what we're doing for the near future. And then just showcasing some of the activities that we do. So we really want to highlight some SMEs um, and to, to give them that support, yes. Okay, so are you going to be here tomorrow as well? Oh yes, yes, yes. We are here for the both days. So okay, okay, awesome. Awesome. Okay, and I see that there is a little table over here yeah, with some yeah. goodies. Some nice goodies here. Can you tell us your name and then tell me about what I'm seeing here in front of me? This is Cardi. This way my name is Shazie Thompson. These are the different crops grown on our farm in Mansum. Mansum. These are the cut apple. These are the black sapote. These are the fat pork which you should be familiar with. Yes, 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 yes. I know these before. 
Um, these are the Chinese apple. Okay, I've never seen these before. Uh, never? What else do you, you said crab apple? Asiatic apple. Asiatic apple. Okay. These are the governor's plum. You should be familiar mm -hmm. with it. Yes. And these are the Kaimito. Kaimito. Okay. So how can so if I wanted to buy some of these in bags, how do I get those? We we don't have them available right now, but Okay. But you usually do? Usually. Whenever they're in season? Do we really no. sell? But no. No. Okay. Yeah. So you're researching your items. Yeah. Okay. And the use of them. Okay. So tell me. So whenever you pick them, what happens to them? I don't know if you pick them, but I'm trying to get some of your fruits when you ain't using them. <laughs> what happens to them? Or what yes. we can use them for? Huh? Well. I see that you have items here that I don't always see in season. Mm -hmm. So tell me what that process is like. So for example, I go to the farm or you go to the farm mm -hmm. and you see them on the tree. So you pick them and then you cut them down to the research on them or the research starts from soil level. It varies. Okay. Sometimes we pick them and research them. Sometimes if we see them coming up, we research them from a seedling level. Okay. And we research the uses, how tall it goes, um, for example, how much leaves go on a crop, how high a tree goes. Exactly. Okay, that's a lot of information that I don't really think about. Because I see the fruit and I just want to eat it, I pick it. But you have the technical aspect of it. Yeah. Nice. That's, that's, that's what Kali is all about. Wild sour sap. Wild sour sap. And you have Kaimito. No, you all may not. No, I'm not too familiar. Tell about. me the name of this one again. Kaimito. Okay. Kaimito. If you look, have a look on this side, you get a little bit more information. So how do you eat are. this fruit? <laughs> can you can you cut it open? Cut it yeah. open. Cut it open. Right. Okay. So it turns um purple. Also, oh, this is the green. These are the green varieties. So you just get sap and you just cut it in the middle and you peel it. Okay. You peel the, the skin off of it and you eat it. It's sweet. Nice. Okay, I think I might swing back. Let me don't say it on camera. I want to swing back for a taste. <laughs> yes, but thank you guys so much for giving me your time. You have samples and you didn't tell me. He has samples, camera. Of this one. We're definitely this one taking. right here. Okay. Um, this is the Black chocolate, okay? Right, our chocolate pudding food. Uh -huh. So you have a nice smooth taste like mousse. Ooh. Chocolate mousse. Wow. You have a nice. So it's best served chilled. So we're gonna have a little bit. <laughs> Take a look at this. Okay. So we get to okay, so let, let's see if we could get a sample of this. This one is the black chapate. And this one is the okay, yes, this one right here. Okay, so we'll get a taste. Let's see here. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's taste this here. Let's see. I've never tasted this before, so this is my first time. Mm, this really tastes like a fruit, almost like a dessert. <laughs> almost like a dessert i don't know you're setting me up here i'm trying to watch my figure and he's setting me up this is nice this is like pudding are you sure this is a fruit you have one for the cameraman yes okay and what about this one this one that is the gut apple you know i always see the gut apple but i don't remember ever tasting it before yes it's always been too high to pick thank you okay so how do i eat this now so it seeds inside it okay It's like a citrus sour sap, I think. 
it's like a a mix between golden apple and the sour sap and the sugar apple all in one oh, so many flavors thank you yes thank you guys well that was quite informative i think i might swing back for um <clears throat> a sample for the cameraman <laughs> thank you so much okay so we're going to try to move right along and of course as you can see behind me the horses are actually enjoying themselves now this section right here is the livestock entrance Okay, so I'll save that for when I put my sneakers on, cameraman. But we are going to enter what we see here as the livestock entrance. And already I'm excited because I see cotton candy, popcorn, and games. And this section was one of the sections that we were made to understand is a new and improved livestock section that is called the, the the petting zoo so we're going to take a tour of the petting zoo and show you all that is happening here so before i move along i'm going to head right on over to the station that's over here and the first person that i see is none other than the head of the livestock division dr lesroy henry Dr. Henry, good day. Let me see what time it is. It is 12.33 p.m. So good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. How are you doing? Well, I'm not as bad as I thought I would have been. Oh, really? Yes, but it could have been better. You were expecting worse of yourself, Dr. Henry? Exactly. Oh, don't take on Dr. Henry. He's the people's sham. Expecting worse. You had lots of work, you said? Yes, yes, plenty work. Uh-huh. But uh -huh. it has been relieved somewhat, especially with the large crowd leaving. So I'm a little relieved now. This is the break that you're getting, but remember you still have the rest of the afternoon and tomorrow. You thought you got away? No, I, I'm not looking to get away. I'm just trying to see how I could minimize my energy. <laughs> okay, so I see that you have your livestock petting zoo here. And of course you have other things on display. So is one of your officers going to tell us about what's going on here at the table or would yes. you be the, would you do the honors? Yes, one of them would have to do it. This is the exhibit center mm -hmm. and we have three officers working there. Okay. So Carlos <laughs> Carlos come speak with Mrs. Miss Flanders about the the, the, the exhibit the we have here. <laughs> Explain what they are, what they're used for and so on. So hello, what I want you to do for me is to introduce yourself. You're going to state your name and then you could move right into telling us about your little setup here. So good this afternoon. Right? Good yes, afternoon. My name is Collis Williams and I am a veterinary assistant. So today I will be giving you a tour about what is on our table on display. So at the beginning we have what we would call the nose lead. So this actually assists us with keeping the cattle them calm. So we actually put it in the nose and then we flap it and we twist it. And this actually, but sometimes it gives the animals them a temperament, but after a while it actually keeps them calm because it's a technique for restraining. Well, the equipment used for restraining. This is what you call the hostage. So how you apply it is that you get the top part of the horse mouth and then you twist it and then you pull it this actually keeps the horses then calm but they have to have some real strength because you know the horse strong yeah. yes yes and what is this one here mastitis infusion so mastitis, okay this is for a mastitis mastitis is actually inflammation of the breast okay so uh 
this well he has two but for now we only have one so you have the joya and then we have the one that actually assists with when an animal just get young one so to prevent it from joining off we give it the other one but this is when the animal have let's say the animal died the young one died and then you need the the breast them to go down so then we actually use this to apply it and then this will help with the inflammation and then this will actually help the animal to go over the irritation because during the process of having mastitis the best thing is to get hard some occasion so, so it's a painful process yeah, okay. yeah, yeah some occasion we have blood okay yeah that when you real far gone but when we catch it early this is what we use so what type of animals experience is that well i would say ah, uh, but we mostly get them in pigs not pigs we, yeah we mostly get them in pigs um cattle and sheep and goat that's 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 the most ever getting in. but you could say ah uh, uh, you don't know we have the syringes the clam what is this for <laughs> testicles oh boy yeah but this is for small animals sheep and goat so uh, we actually do know we actually hold the balls and then we try to get it vein and when we get it vein we crush it twice we do twice on each ball. So this now stop the, 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 the sperms from actually coming to the, from coming from the bars. So basically it cut off the sperms. Wow. Yeah, this is what basically you listen to this. But this is for cattle, big so this animals. Is for the bigger animals. And this is for sheep and goat. Okay. And this one is for pigs. So not to not. So after we take out the, 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 the nut or the balls out of the pig we apply it where the nut or the balls would be on this side and then we clamp it and we hold it for at least a minute to kill well there will be a lot of blood actually yeah so we actually use this to suppress the blood oh, oh the poor babies <laughs> yeah um, but how do you soothe them how do you soothe them do you give them any medication? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. we sedate them and stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. good, we good. Neither came to us. We there for a minute, okay, so good. <laughs> okay, uh, what else do you have? This, this is what we use to assist with, um, when we have a dystocia. Basically, you now the act of giving birth, the animal cannot bring forth pit, uh, her animals. So what we do, we apply this on the legs of the animal. Just like this, and you can see we tie them, right? And then when you apply it, you pull downwards gently, because there are certain cotyledons and certain stuff inside the animal you don't want to rupture. So we apply this on both legs, and we gently pull down, not up, not down. Just to assist with bringing forth calves. Uh, sometimes we use it in sheep and goat, but normally we we tend to get you. But the hardest one we ever had was yeah, the hardest one we ever had was a, a cattle because you don't know the cattle they irritated a lot of pain, so they up and down. So. so this is actually to help the cattle yeah. during birth. To help us. To help you to help the cattle. Yeah. Okay, okay. And this is what we call a pig snare. Same way we apply this to the horse, the same way we apply this to a cattle, mostly to a pig, so what that. So we get it in the mouth, over the hocks, and we pull. But then we go at the back part of the animal. So this will be the mouth, and this will be the officer behind there, and this will be the entire animal. This helps to restrain the pigs. Okay. Yeah, because they're kind of rough and yeah, they're yeah. strong. Yeah. But never underestimate the power of pigs. This is what we call a giggly wire. A gig a, say it again for me. A giggly wire. A giggly wire. Not a laughing wire. Is it giggly? <laughs> he said this is called a giggly wire. Why is it a giggly wire? <laughs> well, man, you gotta ask if the people are making it. At least it's not a laughing wire, eh? 
So this is what we we use when we're doing um, amputations. Okay. We're cutting off any animal limb. Uh, if we cutting off, if a farmer asks us to dehorn his or her animals, we actually use this. We apply it around the horn, and we it's a motion. But yes, you got actually got tension on it though. But it's a motion. Yeah. So then we pull and we pull. So I'm not losing my hand, right? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> so this is what we like to see the petri dish. We have the tweezers. The thumb passes, thumb passes, and uh, the kid. Oh, sorry, the kidney dish. Okay. This is what we apply on the veins of the animal to actually assist us with stopping with the bleeding. Okay. okay. So just like how I was explaining this to you, this actually works similar, but this is just a smaller tool. But this no cuts. Oh. It ruptures. The part that it did not. Uh -huh. yeah, but this is just to assist with blocking off. So it's temporary? Pardon? Is it temporary? No, something permanent. Okay. You gotta hold it for at least two minutes. Okay. Up. It's two minutes we don't hold it, right? When we apply this to the vein, it's two minutes we don't hold it for a minute. It's applied until the remove the tissue that are the organ you want. Okay. I like that you're fact checking because you're keeping us informed. I'm learning here. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, the ear tag. Oh. So you're doing your hearing. Okay, so when you want hearing, then let's check, let's check us. Oh! <laughs> so this is what we this is what we use to tag animals. Like the sheep. Yeah, the sheep, goat, pass, pigs. Well, pigs. We don't really use this in pigs. Okay. We normally well, fa some farmers use um a thing that's called the ear notching, where we actually take a piece of the ear. And it actually helps max the fa max the, the animal, right? Um, if I had an ear notch, I would actually show you, and I would actually explain it to you. But we don't have any ear notch because we don't really practice it in saying this. Some people feel it's inhumane, but some people does it anyway. So this is what we call an ear tag, and these are the tags that you use for the ears. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna quickly run through these jars here for me because I see I already see something in front here that says snake and I I don't know where to begin with this one but tell us what's going on so this is um, a two-headed lamb a deformed one right so basically you know it wasn't formed properly you can see it you can see head two heads yeah you can see head wow so they would have been identical twins. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but they surely would have been two. Yeah, 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 definitely. But, but it wasn't found properly. My hypothesis on this was that if the animal probably would have been malnourished. Okay. Because you know when you are pregnant, when you are pregnant, right? You had to eat healthy and you had to, you, you can't actually eat for you anymore. You gotta eat for you and the baby you now. So sometimes we try to encourage farmers to actually assist the animals them lad buy things for the animals you know because even though they're out there in the sun you can't go walk in my bar they want help you check so my my hypothesis was that the animal was malnourished and it didn't had enough strength to bring forth two and to actually help the process of when the breaking down the, the embryo okay yeah so that's just my hypothesis on it. Okay. So it's just a possibility that that could have been the reason why this happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this here is. About the house. Oh, that's very small. This is the smallest I've ever seen a house. You jump on it, but jump on it. Oh no! <laughs> oh wow! Very tiny legs. That poor baby. And then uh, it, it was probably aborted from maybe the same malnourishment or uh, a traumatic injury or something like that. Okay, and then right here you said this is what type of snake is this? I am not. No. What type of snake is this? The brown snake. The brown corn snake. Okay. 
Is this a is this a baby or an adult here? I am not not sure. We can't really tell, but you know what? It's 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 scaring me a bit. So <laughs> I'm going to move forward here and tell me about this one right here. This is farm sheep. Mm -hmm. Let me come on the other side really quickly. Okay, so tell this us. This is a the farm sheep. It would be I would I can't I cannot give you word for word. Uh, I cannot give you a reason on why it was deformed. Okay. But like I said, my thought would be malnourishment. Okay. And probably like the hardness of the weather. Because you know you're out there in the sun, you're not gonna water, probably ain't gonna food. So it's like it's a hard task because when you're pregnant now you had to eat healthy and you had to eat more. Right? So sometimes the farmers them know they don't tie the animal or they don't let the animals in graze in top of fields. Okay, but so, I can't so even better treatment of the animals. Is it possible? Is it possible though that perhaps it's just genetic sometimes? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. But I can't as I said, I can't even blame the farmers then because you know we're coming on to summer and you know the dry weather. The place gets hotter. Yeah, so it's a kind of rough. It's a kind of rough situation. So still. we have to make sure that farmers are reminded to keep the animals hydrated. Yes. Nice. Okay. And then we're gonna wrap up here. We see is this a monkey I'm reading here? Yeah. This very tiny little thing here. Oh my word. You see it? Yes. I bought a monkey. Oh wow, that's very small. This is what, weeks old? Could have been maybe what, two months? Probably, well, the whole thing was so How old do you think this is? What? That, this could have been what, two weeks old? That, that would be maybe the first trimester. Okay, the first trimester of, of the pregnancy. Oh, that's so sad. A poor monkey. And then you know the embryomatic. Ah, yes, yes, yes. The one that did some damage. Yes, I know. <laughs> the dermatophilosis. The dermatophilosis tick right there. For those of you who don't know, this is the tick that is responsible for the skin disease known as dermatophilosis. And fortunately, the livestock division has been doing all that they, they, they of course, yeah, they can try, best, try, try their best to make sure that baitical um is applied to those animals that are affected and what is vertical for those who don't know yeah it's um it's actually a topical that we where we had a, a program a vertical program that we used to go on and we had mr clark going on and he did a, a wonderful job yeah uh, clark listening uh, to commenting he did a wonderful job of going to people's farms, people's homes. They actually come and look for farmers just to get them the vertical. Nice. But sadly now the, the program finished. So. Okay. But yeah, it's a topical that we use to treat vertical, um, I'm saying um, the ticks. Whereas we apply it on the back of the animal, I think is, well, different animal, it varies for different animal. I think it's five ml. You, you use, so you get a syringe and you pull up five ml and you start from to the back of the head, okay. from straight down to the tail. Okay. And then now that would actually assist with getting rid of the ticks. To make the animal healthy. Okay, nice. Well, I won't keep you any longer because I can see that your petting zoo has so much to cover. We're going to try to see how much more we could actually squeeze in. So tell me over here, you have goats and sheep, you have, have cattle pigs. and pigs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to run over to the stalls and see. Thank you so much again, Carlis. Thank you. Okay, so let's go real quickly over here to see how much of the petting zoo we can cover. We can see that there are some children over here enjoying the animals. And this, of course, was catered specifically um, to them because the children are learning a lot about the different animals and what it takes to actually be a livestock farmer. We see some sheep and goats here in this particular stall. And then when we move down, we see that there are pigs. And then we move over here where it looks like there are cattle. You see some cattle here in this stall. These cattle resting. And then the petting zoo that we've heard so much about, where it looks like we have, oh, we have 
little baby animals on the inside here and it looks like children are actually getting the opportunity as promised to pet the animals let's take a look inside and see what's going on up close here at the the petting zoo so if you're looking to find out where this area is this is the petting zoo in the livestock section we see some lamb here we have lamb over on this side hello hello very tiny they look very healthy some sleeping piglets <laughs> hello and doves Okay, so we just took a very quick look there at the Livestock Division's petting zoo. And now we move over to the other side of the field. And like I said before, there is so much to cover. This is quite a big open day. And here we can see that there are goldfish. We have koi. Actually, quite a number of fish here. Are they for sale? Okay, so we have fish that are here on sale. Excuse me. Hello. Good afternoon. We are live on YouTube and Facebook, and we are stopping by at all of the different stalls so that you can tell us what it is that you are offering here at the Agriculture Open Day. Yes. So introduce yourself for me, state your name, and tell us the name of your business. Sherla Huggins. Um, the name of the business is SKM Aqua Friends. And we sell tropical fish. Okay, so what type of fish you have? Um, these are some kai, these are babs, these are fighters, these are goldfish. They're turtles. You have turtles? Oh wow, there are turtles in the middle here. Oh, look at the little cute turtle right here. Nice. Okay, and so how are you selling uh, 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 your fish? Um, right, these are for sale. They are just on display for now. But tomorrow we'll have like the mollies for like five and ten, and the sawtails for ten, and the kais are ten. Okay. And the box. The here, 15. 15. Okay, so for persons who are interested in getting your fish, do you have a contact number? Yes. Um, it's 669-6987. Okay, very nice. Okay, thank you so much for your time. SKN Aqua Friends. Yes, okay, thank you.
Okay, so I see here that there is another booth called the Espo Water Solutions, tap water. Okay, this is interesting. Let's see if we could find out what is happening here. Hi, good afternoon. How are you? I am lovely. I am trying to find out what exactly is taking place here at your booth. I see you have a nice little setup. So I want you to tell us your name and what it's about. Yes. Yes, no problem. This is the Espo Water Solution. Correct. So my name is Chris. And this is a water filter that attaches directly to your faucet. Um, purifies your water. It's 189 AC. Uh, that comes with the, the unit and a six month filter. Once you start replacing the filter, the yearly package is 162 EC, uh, so basically 1350 EC a month. Um, okay, so you're telling me that as long as I attach this filter, as long as this filter is attached to my pipe, I'll be able to drink it? Correct, yes. Uh, so there's two, two levers. There's This is the filtered, and if you're washing dishes or washing your hands or don't want filtered water to waste the, the filter, you can turn on and that's your regular regular tap water. Okay. So regular tap water and then filtered water. Do we get to taste it? Absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna get to taste it. Ah. Esco Water Solutions is going to give us the opportunity. Oh, and there's ice in the cup to beat the heat. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Would you like some water? So the chlorine is removed right away. Nice. This is for you, cameraman. <laughs> Your department put on it, it's an excellent, excellent event. I can't say it's unbelievable. Yes. It's really, really great. So how have you been enjoying the open day so far? I love it. It's great. I think it should be happening more than once a year. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful. Yes. Great. I mean, this is the first time that we're actually coming on the Newtown Playfield, okay. but it gives us more space. Don't you agree? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, nice. I think you should do more than once a year. More than once yeah. a year. More? Okay. Yeah, this is nice. This is really nice. Beating the heat right here. I think I'm going to take some more as well. Okay. Would you like more ice? Yes, please. This is how we beat the heat, of course, with our filtered water right here at the Espo Water Solution stall. So for those of you who are looking for the stall, as soon as you enter, just at the back of the stage, you can come over. So what if I wanted to bring a bottle? Can I bring a bottle and get water? Absolutely, you bring okay. a bottle and get a free t-shirt. Wow, I should have known earlier. Maybe I still have time. Sustainable okay, yes. Solution. It's a, a sustainable solution, yes. yes. So you heard that, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are watching and listening, if you bring a water bottle, you could come and taste the water and then you get a free t-shirt, okay? And the t-shirt looks like this, yes? yes? Nice, oh, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna run right over to the next stall and see what's happening up here. I see some plants. Okay, we are live on YouTube and Facebook. And I see a familiar face here. So tell us, how have you been enjoying the Agriculture Open Day? I have been enjoying it quite a bit. I got a few plants that I wanted. My stall is all set up. So you guys come on down and look for a sugar ton organic stand. Um, you get all your beautiful sauces, salad dressing. We have a mango ketchup. We have the mango passion hot sauce that you love. Yes. <laughs> Yes. We also have a new one, guava and papaya, and we have a, a um, toasted curry coconut Ooh, hot sauce as well. That's new. Yes. Okay. You see how she's tantalizing? <laughs> wow. Okay, so that means we're going to swing down by your stall any minute now. But what I like is that the vendors and the agro-processors are also running around to make sure that they grab what they can because Quite a number of persons have been buying up the, the, the item, especially the plants. I know, right? Because I've been sitting looking at some flowers there and I, I lost my mind. I should have come for them and I said, yes. no, we don't have them. <laughs> and I love flowers. Everybody knows I love flowers, mm -hmm. right? My whole yard is planted by flowers. Among all the other trees, but I love flowers. And they're gone. Yes. And they're gone. Wow. 
out. So hopefully they would have more tomorrow. Yes. So if you're listening, please make sure to come in early and grab your plants as soon as possible because people are buying up the plants like it's food. Yes, but you know the plants is a really big thing. It's a really big thing. Yes. Especially yes. now people are getting to know the medicinal benefits of having the plants. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's planting up their back and everything, which is beautiful to nice. me. Nice, yeah. Yeah, so it's nice. Okay, so we're gonna let you enjoy the rest of your plant shopping. <laughs> Oh, we have some more plants over here, so we're going to take a look. Sorry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So we're jumping in to your little section here and we are live on YouTube and Facebook. We want to get an idea of what's happening at your booth. So introduce yourself, tell us your name and the name of the business and what's happening here. My name is Estisha Morton and the business name is Tropical Blossom Nursery from Nevis. And right now we have a lot of different types of plants. We have um, these. These are peace lily, these need shade. We have the hydrangeas. Um, we have we have so much here, you yeah. can't even you can't keep count. Yes, we have tell. so much. And these are the orchids. Oh, those yeah. are beautiful. Very those nice. are gorgeous flowers. And Thank I you. realized earlier today I saw lots of people rushing over here to yes. get their plants. I was just talking about that. So that tells me that people are really interested in buying more and more plants. And it's yeah. good that you came down from Nevis. Yes, because we have a lot of customers in St. Kitts. Nice. So we came over just for them today. Uh -uh. Well, I sure St. Kitts people feel really special, eh? Yep. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay, so what else do you have? Is this your section as well over here? Some of these? Okay, so what do you have here? We have the potents, we have guavas, um, roses, and we have a few indoor plants over here as well. Okay, so for those persons who are interested in coming to get some plants, so tell them again the name of the business and how can they get in contact with you? Well, the it's Tropical Blossom Nursery and we are located at uh, Pinnies Industrial Site, Nevis. Okay, and you have a contact number? Sure, it's 664-2856. 2856. Wonderful. Thank you again. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see you again tomorrow, yes? Okay, then wonderful. Okay, so we're going to run on over to the other section and see what else is taking place. If you are listening, if you are listening, we are live at the Agriculture Open. The pressures of your life and it up. No stay down, mama time, pick it up. No matter with the down, full style, strictly up, full vibes. And pick it up when the bills, them, the rent, and the mortgage due. Yeah, yeah. When me chalice, when your best friends are gone and it's only you. Yeah, like a pass, lift on up the music. Skanking sweet. Everybody wanna feel like free. Forget your troubles and your rock right here live at the Newtown Playfield at the 27th annual Agriculture Open Day. And as I mentioned earlier, this is an event that you have to come and see for yourself. Listen, I tried as much as possible to walk through everything. I'm gonna try to see if the cameraman can do more walking for me because I burn boy, I burn. <laughs> so much to cover here on the field. I mean, you have fruits and vegetables look at that we have sour sap over here we have sweet pepper over here we have bread nut over there we have squash over there and look we got calabash over there we got pumpkin man you're killing me man you have everything <laughs> you have everything and that's your green banana wow everything everything look at we have cucumber carrots eh? We got watermelon, tomatoes, hot sauce, pineapple, everything that you could think of. 
come down to the agriculture open day and get them. We even have jelly. So if you want jelly water and you know the place is hot, come on down to the agriculture open day and get your jelly water. We have seasoning pepper. Look how juicy the tomatoes look over there. Man, come on, it's a steal of a deal and you can't get the prices no better than this. Nowhere else. We have pineapples here as well. We have jam. We have snacks. We have onions. We have sweet potato, white potato, tanya, yam, edo, bananas. And then on top of that, we have stalls over here. This area here is the agro-processing area. And this area here, we see, called the emerald. And because we are live, we're going to let you talk to us a little bit about your booth and tell us your name and what's happening here. What's going on? Hi, I am Shalimar, the owner of the Emerald uh, Home Fragrances business. Everything here you see is all locally made by me. We start on this end. We have here some cat ear fresheners. We have bath salts. These are scented candles in different sizes, different fragrances, a wide variety as you can see. We have here some um, wax ear fresheners. Um, wax ear fresheners. These are for smaller spaces like your bathroom or closet. We have burner oils, weed diffusers, um, wax smells, and these are some miniature candles. I'll let you have a smell and tell me what you think. Yes. Oh my gosh, wow, it just hits you. You know, one of my favorite scents, I believe, was Volcano. Volcano, yes, you have it here somewhere. I have one right here. Oh my goodness, if you have not smelled these candles, you probably need to run down here right now because they smell delicious. Delicious. You can't eat it, you can't eat it but that, that's just how they smell. <laughs> they smell really nice very very nice okay so for persons who want to get in contact with you so i am on all social media on facebook instagram at the emerald st kids or my number is 767-4189 thank you so much are you gonna be here tomorrow i'll be here all day today and all day tomorrow very good so you heard it if you are looking to get all of these lovely products come on down to the agriculture open day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., the Emerald is here to stay. And we move on to the next booth here, that is Native Radiance. We have products that are here as well, so I'll allow you to introduce yourself. State your name. Hi, good day. My name is Shobana Prince, and I am the owner of Native Radiance. Nice. And we are from Nevis. You're from Nevis? Yes. Okay, well, welcome to Sweet Sugar City. Nice. Thank you. Okay, so tell me, what products do you have here? All right, so I have a wide range of products. I have products that will help to regrow your hair. As you can see the images behind here, we have um, products that if you have any type of skin fungus, any type of skin issues, they would help. We have products that help with the flu and the cold. Um, some of them I formulated after I developed COVID. And we have things like for overall health. We have a lot here, lots of detox. We have compression stuff, creams, oils, balms. Which item would you say is your most popular item? Okay, so I have the coffee herbal hair oil, uh -huh. and that is really good for hair growth. So if you have alopecia, uh -huh. if you have any type of hair loss issues, problem with your edges. Okay. That's it with the brown label. This one right here? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna take a look right here. And we're going to show the people which one is it. Tell me which one you say. That's the coffee herbal hair oil. The coffee oh. herbal hair oil, that's for hair growth. Then we have the neem moringa and turmeric. We have the oil and we have the soap as well. We have the pain oil, pain and inflammation. And all of our products. I mean, you can see for yourself. These are people right here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Right here. And um, if you're in St. Kitts, you can find my products at Balumat or at Farm Care. And we have an outlet in St. Kitts. It's Fashion 2020 across the street from the Polar Company. In Nevis, my shop is at the Artisan Village. You can find products at City Drugstore and at um, Eureka's Health Services and Valumat. Okay, so give us your contact number. So my personal number is 664-9317. So if you want to have a free consultation, you can message me there. My business is 668 
simply 641 and if you are living overseas you can visit www.nativeradiance.com the items are already in the u.s so it takes one to two business days depending on where you are yes wonderful oh that's amazing congratulations and thank you again i wish you all the best we'll see you tomorrow yes okay good okay so i'm good i'm good how are you so we're moving right along more of the vendors at the agriculture open day we have so many different items to cover we see nature's best right here and there is so much here we can see oils and soaps so much happening here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give them the quick opportunity to tell us the name of the business and then tell us your name hi good afternoon hi good afternoon my name is randy morton and i'm with nature's best it is a joint venture between my wife and myself uh, what we realize is that we are not just consumers of food from outside but we consume a wide variety of imported products and we also have some local plants that we could extract some sort of um, ingredient from to manufacture products that are comparable to those imported products which is what you see here on this plate today but i would like to introduce you to one particular product let me come around the table this is called tranquility tranquility okay. yes it's a headache and stress reliever so for all the pss ministers of government lawyers Doctors, persons who are under a lot of pressure. <laughs> Teachers, too. Eh? Teachers, too. And not leaving all you out. Nature's best got you covered. Okay. Thank you, Nature's best. You have a whole wide variety of things here. And you're going to be here tomorrow as well? Yes, we're going to be here tomorrow as well. Can you give us a contact number for persons who want to buy? Yes, we have two numbers, 663 7646 and 764 8793. Thank you. Remember, nature's best, healthy body, healthy life. Nice. Thank you. Okay. I believe that we have done so much. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on over to the center of the field. We're gonna move to the center of the field right here at the stage because as much as we have fun games like the bubble football that's happening in the center right here for the children who are interested and the mechanical bowl the fruits and vegetables all of these things we also want to give attention to the entertainment the entertainment Come on, right down, EK. Ladies and gentlemen, we want me to come on. I, I, I don't mind, you know. I don't mind, I don't mind. <laughs> Good afternoon. What do you want to talk about? Okay, so this right here, this gentleman, he needs no introduction. But of course, we did not want to leave the entertainment. Everybody's talking so much about how the music sounds and the quality of the music. So we really did not want to leave entertainment out. So tell us, for those of you who don't know who this is, introduce yourself for us. Ladies and gentlemen, good day. Well, right. No adoption needed. You understand? That's a far right. Okay, then. So tell me, you've been here at the Agriculture Open there many times before, but this is the first time that we're actually here at the Newtown Playfield. And of course, you can see it gives us more space. So tell me something. What else can you tell me you, you, you like so far? Well, the, the layout, um, for those who've been to the agriculture department, you understand that it was still a good cramp for space. But this year is a more open. You can see everything. You can see where you want to buy. You can go. It's just more space. You understand? Yeah. It's sexy at all. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. What do I expect from EK? EK gonna be EK. <laughs> yes, man. Okay, so tell me something else. So, are you going to be here again tomorrow? Yeah, man, definitely here okay, for the so two days. You know how you're the place. Entertainment gonna be sexy. It's gonna be boomy. So when you don't walk tomorrow, when you don't walk today. 
make sure you come here. We got a well stocked bar, we got food can done. Anything you could think about to eat, we got it. If you want to buy a little plan for your house, a little books and thing, come here, we got it. We got flowers. Um, what we got? We're in the bowl, see the bowl over there, bowl give yeah. people legs. You got half stung there, man, everything here. It's a fun field day, it's for the family, it's for the drunkards, it's for everybody. I just come. You understand? Nice. Sexy. Nice. Boom. <laughs> well, you heard it from the man himself. That, of course, is none other than Mr. E.K. Flanders of Real Right Entertainment. But, ladies and gentlemen, listen, I wish that we could do more and bring you more. But as I told you, you need to make sure that you come on down to the Agriculture Open Day. Because if you're not at the Agriculture Open Day, you are surely missing out. I wish I could take you to more stalls, but I am tired and I'm ready to go and eat all that I've seen, okay? So I'm gonna use this opportunity now to sign out and wish you all the best. I'm inviting you once more to come on down to the Newtown Playfield. The event runs from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m on thursday and friday so tomorrow we're continuing again at the 27th annual agriculture open day i have been your lovely host for this well for today's proceedings shaira flanders i'll see you again tomorrow the wickedest kind of girl that is a fly as buck up and now do you heard about this turn her name is Maxi her beauty's like a bunch of pros <laughs> and I, if I ever tell you about Maxi you only say I don't know what I know but murder she wrote murder she wrote murder she wrote na 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 murder she wrote but you know stand still you're not paying me like bill if you're testing rock I'm off and tell you why and get killed you keep it can you walk with me with me and the limits let me talk about it Come out, uh, because you're not nah, shut out And when you hear the rock, I'm off in every jump And shout out, touch me gate uh, You're not paying me water with the concrete It's great, great, you're yeah, angry Follow me! You pretty face and bad character Them the kind of living can hold chaka Follow me! You pretty face and bad character Them the kind of living can hold chaka Say, girl, you're pretty You face it pretty, but your character dirty Girl, you're just a act too Flirty, flirty You run to Tom Dick And I'm so angry And when you find your mistake You talk about your sorry Not even what again, gold me. And I'm mercy. What again, me? I'm gonna get me. I'm gonna get me. Wicked, wicked, and if I do, you just get me. Damage, damage, don't trust me. I'm why most is stupid. They forget me. They forget me. Most of them slow and rapid. I am. Come as a lamb, don't feed them timid. If I do, you just get me. They forget executed. Trust me. I am lyrically ill. Nineties, I am programmed to kill. Tell the world that they made up the money. Really come back this year. Where them are gonna do? Behold me. What do you mean? Or to get me wicked this year, not to evil was again, cool me. Watch me. See you feel big up, big up. All of the women, them big up, big up. All of the girls, them big up, big up.